Hello guys and welcome to Connect Channel where you can have access to gospel content. Do well to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Stay tuned to this video you are about to watch. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. consider is we want to find out why it keeps getting difficult to get married in the church today what exactly is the puzzle what is wrong is it that god has changed his mind about marriage and relationships please pay attention married single this is from the spirit and this will bless us why many christians remain unmarried not willfully and why many more Christians will remain unmarried in the days to come. Hallelujah. Number one. The first reason why many Christians or many in the body of Christ. Loving people, people who sincerely love God and fear the Lord. May remain unmarried for a very long time. The first reason here is misconceptions and confusion about the concept of the will of God or the perfect match write it down the first reason is misconceptions and confusions about the concept of you can put in quote the will of God or the perfect match write it down we hail you most high. We truly hail you most high. There is a widespread, uh, listen carefully, there is a widespread confusion in the body of Christ. Pentecostal circles, Orthodox circles, Presbyterian circles. There is a widespread confusion and that confusion keeps multiplying as to the concept of what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the will of God in marriage or as we call it in a secular society, the perfect match. This has been one of the major reasons why many believers do not get married and why many may not get married. It's a different thing if you are planning, you have your goals and so on and so forth. But there are so many people who truly desire to be married. 40 years, 50 years, 55 years, 60 years in the church. They tell you they are still trusting God for a life partner or trusting God to settle down. And the number one reason is that there has been a misconception. Of course, perpetuated by men of God and marriage counselors and christian counselors and christian books and relationship ministries about the concept of the will of god and the perfect match is that true there are so many people today who may never get married because they listen to a message in a marriage seminar or your pastor or another man of god or somewhere a convention a conference you went to and you heard a woman of God or a man of God you respect and admire communicate a thought about the will of God about the perfect match and the danger of making a wrong decision in marriage the grave consequence of having someone who is not designed for you and that has put fear in the body of Christ is that true unbelievers don't have any problem because they can hop into any relationship and hop out. They can get married. And then for, for unbelievers, marriage is a contract, not a covenant. So there is no fear. I can step in and get married to this lady. After two years, if it does not work, I throw her out and go my way. So because of that, um, that freedom that godlessness affords them, they have no fear. Is that true? One person can be in a relationship with 20 ladies, for instance. And then the person does not care, frankly, because he's at liberty at any time to let any of them go. But there seems to be this sacredness in the body of Christ, which is very good. But if not balanced, it will mislead a lot of people. 
So the fear of missing out on the will of God, the confusion as to how to really ascertain is there one person for a guy or a lady that has been destined when you were born that one person was born and if you never find that person you are in confusion there's been all kinds of teaching like that is that true and many ladies are sincerely waiting and then um the icing of the cake has been the concept of prophetic revelation prophetic revelation has further complicated this point right when you identify a lady and you tell her for instance i'm seeing your husband in a vision your husband's name is john he's a yellow guy tall um is a graduate of unn and and so on and so forth and all through that lady's life 10 years 20 years she convinces herself that she's enduring because of a prophetic word that was given it doesn't matter how many christian borrowers come around because she's motivated by the sincere desire now it's not like she's trying to be difficult are you is god speaking to you already this this teaching tonight will bring a very radical deliverance to many people hallelujah so she's waiting for the perfect match every guy that comes she's looking at him based on the prophetic template and she trusts the man of god who gave her that revelation he may not be a fake man of god and then for 20 years she's waiting and you ask her what exactly are you waiting for and said all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes now watch this watch this there are many people who waited like that and their change truly came someone came exactly like that and it was worth the wait and there are others who have waited like that and five years turned to 10 10 turned to 15 15 turned to 25 years when their colleagues the children of their colleagues are graduating and getting married they are still waiting for that promise and they died in anger and bitterness what exactly is the concept of the will of god in terms of marriage what does the bible teach not what does a marriage counselor teach not what let me tell you something marriage is a mystery no matter how long you are married you cannot have enough audacity to talk about it so accurately you know i i truly believe listen listen i believe um in the fact that experience can teach a lot of things when a man has been married for 30 years 35 years i believe he has something to say but the mysterious nature of marriage is such that there is no amount of time you stay in marriage that will afford you every information and knowledge you know as far as you are living in a mortal body hallelujah is that true paul the apostle for instance was never married yet he articulated a lot of things and he guided the new testament church about marriage jesus himself was never married yet he spoke about the issue of marriage and divorce so i i want to clarify something up front there are many people who believe that because they are married they convince themselves that they have gained enough experience to tell everybody anything and they create a doctrine out of their experience and they tell everybody shut up what do you know about marriage marriage is a mystery it's not revealed by your longevity there it's revealed by the agency of the holy spirit is god helping us tonight because many erroneous books listen have come as a result of people who claim they have experience 30 years in marriage 40 years in marriage and they market their template on what they think their experience has been as at the time they were getting married there were social cultural differences at that time a woman was believed to only be dependent women did not go to school then women did not do a lot of things then a woman never dreamt of owning a house is that true a woman never dreamt of getting a job so that that ideology of marriage as per that time made a man absolutely responsible for everything 
and so the woman stayed at home as a responsibility whether the man treated her well or not she knew that leaving was never an option because the ideology given to her was that if you leave the home you have no reason to live again so that man who may have been punishing his wife for 30 years only because they are not divorced convinces himself that he has been doing the right thing because they are together are you getting the point now and he takes what is supposed to be his experience and he starts to mentor younger generations and say after all my wife is here with me we have been 30 years in marriage that woman has gone through 30 years of hell it's just that her, her ideology has kept her there and because they are not divorced the man convinces himself that he understands the formula for marriage wrong in our contemporary society today it is possible to come into a lady's life who already has a car she already has a house is that true probably has a very good job and so when you come um that dependency mindset maybe for instance in time past you know women had to wait exclusively for a man if he did not give her 10 naira she would not eat now a woman is the ceo of a bank and she's married to the man so obviously things have changed are you getting the point now and many of us are already on our way to a lot of confusion in time past for instance when a guy wanted to ask a lady out there's no western diplomacy you walk straight to her and say i want you to be my wife pray about it that was the end of it you try that today and see how it will hurt you in a way you will never recover from see that now a man listen listen he he got his wife that way and now he teaches you he says look stand up and take steps walk up to the lady and speak the bible says open your mouth and i'll feel it and you now get up taking 1975 or 1954 to 2015 and you go and meet the lady and said i want to marry you i hear you are from my place pray about it get back to me tomorrow because there was a, there was an arrogance that men at that time had a man was a distinguished personality educated or not it was a privilege for a man to walk up to a lady in fact there were certain arranging marriages that were done at that time that the first time the lady sees the man that's when she's leaving the house it, they didn't have any dating nonsense they did no restaurant they just called her and said abigail where are you this is your husband and she rejoiced she rejoiced because for her it was a privilege but marriage in the 21st century has changed you take that template i promise you you can pray all the tongues you want to pray you will be in for a disaster Are we ready to fly now? This is an appetizer. Hallelujah. Oh, I have many things to talk about today. My goodness. So the misconception on the concept of the will of God. What exactly does the Bible teach about the will of God? What exactly does the Bible teach? I've heard of different concepts. Concept number one is one man to one woman right what people will want to call the predeterminate counsel of god meaning that before you arrived your wife had been there she had been um she's somewhere around the earth your assignment is not to look for a woman your assignment is through whatever channel and means you can afford find that one woman and if you do not find her, you miss out on the will of god and there have been testimonies both for or against that concept the interesting thing about marriage is any point you raise whether godly or ungodly there are testimonies to prove its validity are you seeing the confusion now any point you raise about marriage there are testimonies to prove its validity that's what makes it very very technical because whatever perspective you look at it there are people who will agree with it and there are people who will disagree with it the concept of one man and one woman for instance there are people who have given us stories that they were minding their business and they saw a vision that's where the concept of vision came from is that not true they saw a vision the name of the lady her address and everything and it happened exactly as they saw 
we have watched on tv and gone for many conferences when a man of god can help a woman decipher certain things and tell her with accuracy the life partner for her so that revelation now brings us to a point where there is even more confusion in the body of christ if a man of god can tell me exactly the name of my husband why beat around the bush why not just pay the price and look for a man of God whose discernment has been proven to work well and just sow into his life and let this man please end the confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the danger of this. It has brought more confusion, especially to singles. Ladies, have you seen 10 guys come to you and every one of them told you, I had a dream. I saw a vision. And they are not lying. They are not telling a lie. Are you getting me? I counsel people all the time. And you can find multiple guys or multiple ladies all having a vision or a dream about the same person. And you may think they are just corny. No, 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 no. Some of them were minding their business. Some of them have had repeated dreams and visions for others as much as 50 or 100 about the same person. How do are you? Am I blessing you tonight? And now this innocent brother minding his business has seen all kinds of visions. Every time he sleeps, this is the sister he's seeing. And then the sister is engaged engaged to somebody who is born again and this guy is confused he does not know what to call the name of his situation right now should i pray for that relationship to be broken should i disagree with my visions and yet nobody is speaking about it on stage there are many believers just jumping but carrying loads of confusion and guessing what they think their way around this relationship thing is this is one of the reasons why there is no marriage in the church hallelujah to an extent that many people today do not even trust their dreams and visions or any experience again because you had a dream about brother a he married in your very presence now the dream changed brother b he's getting married next week and you just say no 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 something is wrong i know i'm not demonized but i know something is wrong how many brothers are patiently waiting for some sisters now do you know that some people have even trusted god to an extent that even when the guy is married unconsciously they begin to wish the lady dead because they believe that that my what is my own is my own you go to prophetic ministries and i, I don't say this in a critical way and see the names of brothers and sisters that fly around the altar of men of God engaging all kinds of mysteries of restoration mysteries of reclaiming mysteries of, of forcing what is your own to come to you the Bible says thy word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path let me tell you something if nobody talks about this there will be more confusion in the body of christ you will find ladies in their 30s and their 40s not getting married pretty lady virtuous lady but the fear every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she remembers a prophecy she had every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she just thinks am i so desperate that i'm giving up the better now to take the good let me be a little patient maybe my change will come this has hurt the sisters more you know why because the brothers are the ones who do the asking the sisters do the positioning and it's frustrating to position yourself under factors that are very ambiguous as a guy what's come to us you just say lord stop me if i'm wrong i'm on my way going <laughs> there are two ways god can lead you start or stop he can initiate it or you move and say lord if it's against your will stop me but for a lady her job is to position herself and brothers and sisters it's frustrating when you position yourself and you keep positioning yourself 
days turn to weeks to months to years to decades 